Howdy doody, my name is Susie and today I'm washing my sweaters to put them away for spring and summer. So I thought I'd bring you along. The uh, process is very easy, it's not labor intensive, but it does take some time. And it is definitely worth hand washing these delicate and treasured um, clothing articles uh, that are made from wool. And these are all different types of wool. Wool comes from animals. Um, so you have a variety of wools and you can wash all of them the exact same way. And that is with some baby wash or baby shampoo and some cool water. Now in this array of wools, each wool has a different characteristic. So you can have any type of wool. It can be Angora, which comes from the Angora goat and the Angora rabbit, or it can be cashmere, which comes from the cashmere goat. It can also be alpaca, which comes from the alpaca. And you can, then you have lamb's wool that comes from lambs. You have the Murano um, wool that comes from the Murano goat. And then you have mohair that comes from the Angora goat. So any type of woolen sweater that you have, you can use this method to wash it. And like I said, all we need is some baby shampoo or baby wash, or they've got baby top to toe or toe to top. Um, a gentle, very mild cleansing shampoo or baby wash is perfect for this. And one of the ones that I have washed, and I've got many different sweaters, um, I was really concerned about the cashmere because it just seems to be so delicate. But it's the same process and it, it turned out fantastic and so soft. Now the cashmere, like I said, comes from cashmere goats. And it was so interesting when you start looking into the origins of different fibers. So for cashmere, 70% of the cashmere is produced in China. 20% of all the cashmere is produced in Mongolia. And then the other 10% is produced everywhere else. With cashmere, it comes from the cashmere goat and very fine cashmere is actually the undercoat of the goat. The top coat, they call them guard hairs and they're a little coarser. The finest of cashmere sweaters are actually produced by combing the cashmere goat. So as you comb it, you're pulling out just the undercoat if the cashmere goat is sheared, it's sheared with the soft undercoat and the guard hairs. And that produces um, an inferior, well, a less expensive quality of cashmere. The other thing that I found out about cashmere, which is so interesting, is that I didn't know that specialty fibers and yarns they're measured in diameters and they call them microns. So that's their unit of measurement. The other thing that's really important in knowing if your cashmere is a, a very expensive piece is that they use the longest cashmere fibers in order to produce the softest of materials. They also use a gauge which they call ply. Just like in toilet paper, you have one ply, two ply, three ply. The higher the ply, the softer the tissue. Well, with regards to the ply for cashmere, it's rated from one to 10, 10 being the highest. And that just means that it's the number of fibers that are wound together to create one thread. So one fiber is very weak, going all the way up to 10 fibers wound together into a strand. That would be the highest quality for your cashmere and your sweater would probably cost in the very high hundreds or thousand dollars. Also, the quality of the cashmere is really going to depend on where the cashmere is coming from. I found out that one cashmere goat will produce a third of a pound of cashmere per year. And they are, and the goats are sheared every year at springtime. So now, cashmere is something that is very common nowadays. And if you do have cashmere sweaters that uh, you purchased on sale or were inexpensive, 
then you have to look to see what the cashmere is mixed with. And it could be mixed with other materials in order to make it more economical. In for that you. case, when the cashmere sweater is um, mixed with other fibers, um, polyesters, etc., the quality of the cashmere goes down. And you can see this because maybe after a year or two of wearing it, you start to get all the pilling. And the pilling happens just because of the friction of the fibers. So it is said that a really high quality cashmere sweater, the fibers are longer, they will pill at some point, but it'll take a very long time. So that's a little bit on the cashmere. And it's just so interesting to find out some of this information. It kind of gives you an indication as to why these sweaters are so prized and expensive. So with my cashmere sweater, I did the exact same thing as I'm going to do with this sweater. So I've already washed these. And this is a, a mohair sweater and it is um, fluffy and it's a hand knit. And I know that I had a really good evening with this sweater because I could see everything that I had that evening. So this really needs a wash. So all I'm going to do, and I'm using a little, um, this little tub, which is perfect for washing the sweaters because you just need a small amount of water to wash these. If you have sweaters that are much bulkier, it's a lot easier to just do it in your sink. So I'm gonna get some cool water and then we're gonna wash our sweat. So I have my water and I've just got a couple of inches of water and it's just room temperature um, cool water. I, I can't use really cold water because it doesn't make it comfortable for washing. So just cool water, like whatever, room temperature. And then I'm just gonna add, uh, I'm just gonna squeeze out maybe a tablespoon the shampoo and just mix it in your water. And you want to make sure that the water is cool because if the water is hot, it will shrink the natural fibers. From what I've read, these natural fibers have um, scales or cuticles like your hair. They're almost like little uh, burbs along um, each fiber. So if you were to shrink your sweater, what ends up happening is those scales, they hook onto each other, your fat, your sweater shrinks, and then you can't pull them apart. So you wanna make sure that the water is cold. So then you just want to submerge your sweater in the water and you wanna let it sit for a couple of minutes to make sure that it's really saturated. And then all, so I, all you're gonna do is just push, I just push the water through my garment by just pressing it down and I just pretend that I am the washing machine. I'm just doing it gently. It's almost like kneading dough and you never want to scrub the fabric. You don't want to wring the fabric. You don't want to stretch the fabric because it will lose its shape. So you want to be really gentle with this and it's easier on you too. You just push it through now and it's definitely gotten a little bit dirty I just push it back and forth for a few minutes now I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit if you have um, a sweater or garment or whatever that um, is very soiled maybe you want to just let it soak for 10-15 minutes to try and loosen that soil a little bit more. In the meantime, just grab a couple of old clean towels and have them handy because we're going to be rolling the garment in the towel in order to absorb most of the water because we're not going to be wringing this out. So let me show you what the water looks like now. Just squeeze the water through. Move it around a little bit. And look how dirty the water is. So now I'm gonna pour this out. I'm going to add fresh water, a little bit more soap, and I'm going to do this again until my water is perfectly clear. So for areas and here, there seems to be a little mark or food stain of some sort. I don't know if you can see, it's a little discolored. So for things like this, the cuffs, 
under the arms, the collar, I just take uh, a new little sponge, soak it in some water, just add a drop of the shampoo, lather it up, and then I'll come in and just gently work out or work in and gently work out that stain. And really, I'm not rubbing vigorously to disrupt the fibers. I'm really creating a foam that I'm kind of moving around. And I can just do it along the edge because these are the spots which are going to be the dirtiest. And then of course, under the arms, collar, and this is usually the spot where, you know, some cosmetics or perfume. Just agitating it a little bit, foaming it up. Nothing too vigorous, but this little extra attention to these spots really help in making a difference. And then you just squish it again. And this is my second wash. And you can see the water is looking much cleaner. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm going to rinse it off with cool, clean water. So now I've rinsed it in cold water and this is my second rinse. And you can see there's no bubbles and the water is clean. Pour all the water out and you can press some of the water out by just pulling it up against the sides like this. So once you squeeze out as much water as you can, if it's a bulkier sweater or if it feels really wet, I'll just let it sit close to the drain in my sink for about half an hour or so and just let gravity pull the water to the bottom of the sweater and then in about half an hour I come back in and I can do it give it another squeeze ideally you want to get as much water out of this as you can all you want is uh, a clean towel old towel new towel uh, it's not going to hurt the towel it's just going to absorb this extra water um, and what I do is there's a little bit more water in that sleeve. Lay your garment out in its original shape or as close to it as you can. Cover your sweater and roll it up. You're basically sandwiching your sweater in this uh, towel. So I just take this and I can just lay it in my tub, dry tub that is, and I can do a number of sweaters and lay them all side by side. And then I just let them sit for about an hour or so, half an hour, whatever. I check on them every once in a while, would have to absorb a lot of the water. The towel will be soaking wet, but your sweater will be damp. And then you can just take all your towels, since they're clean anyways, this is clean water, throw them all into the dryer and dry them. This doesn't dirty them at all. Once this towel is soaking wet, I remove this, I can throw it uh, to go in the dryer, and I get myself another towel and I do the same thing. But on the second towel, I'm going to simply arrange the sweater. We're going to pretend that the first, we removed the first towel and it's wet, and now this is our new dry towel. And this is when you are going to lay your sweater out to dry, but this is the time that you want to actually position your sweater and just give it a little pull and stretch back to its original form before you actually wash, washed it. And I've seen the professionals do it and they actually measure the entire garment, the length of the sleeves and the width of the sweater before they wash it. And then they measure it at this stage to make sure that it dries exactly the same size as the sweater that their client brought in. But for our purposes, I don't need to measure. I know how big my sweater is. And I'm just going to adjust it. I'm gonna adjust it to the size 
sleeves are always a little tight up here, so I'm going to give it an extra pull. I also gather up the waist of the sweater just to kind of um, reposition where, unless your sweater is uh, a line shape, but mine's got like a little um, different stitch, a narrower stitch. And then I'll do the same thing to the cuffs. I just kind of squeeze them together and reshape that original shape. And that's it. And now you have to let it dry on a flat surface. So a uh, drying rack, let it dry for 24 hours and in 24 hours it will be fresh, clean and fluffy. So now I've just got that off to the side. I'm going to let it dry. And this was the sweater that I did yesterday and it's nice and dry today. And it doesn't have a scent because it's the baby shampoo. It just smells fresh. So this is 70% mohair and 30% new wool, which I'm not sure what the new wool is, but this is a vintage blanket bought in Bermuda and it was made in England. So, so in order to wash this blanket, I did it in the sink. I did all the same steps, wrung it out, rolled it into my towel, and then it was just damp enough that I could hang it. And what I did was I folded in, um, I folded it lengthwise and I draped it over a thick plastic hanger and then I hung it from my shower head and just let it drip dry into my tub. Of course, if you have a nice warm breezy day, you could uh, definitely hang these outside and let them dry that way. Really, um, my cashmere sweater turned out perfectly. So one thing I did with the cashmere, because it's much, much finer. So when I laid it down to for the final dry on my second dry towel, I just gently went over it with my hands and I ironed out while it was damp. I smoothed out any wrinkles that was on the sweater. And as you can see, you can see it, it's wrinkle free. So I'm able to just fold it nicely. And I was able to smooth out um, almost all of those wrinkles to the point that um, it doesn't need anything else. I can just put it on and wear it when I'm ready. In regards to the items that have uh, longer fibers, like this mohair, it's a mohair vest. Once it's dry, it was pretty, it seemed to be pretty flattened out the fibers as in you can see on the back, the fibers are flattened. So all I did is with, and this is um, just a lint remover, and it is the, the lint remover. That's fun doing that. It's the lint remover that it's just velvet, and the raised velvet is what picks up the lint. So what I did is with the raised side, I just fluffed up all of the fibers up in reverse. And then turned it around and combed it down. So what you end up getting, and I don't know, I hope the camera can pick it up, is this side is, has been combed, if you can see. It's been combed and fluffy. Whereas this side, I haven't done anything with it, but you can see it's pressed. The fibers are all pressed down. It doesn't look very nice. So fluff it up. So this is really handy and it does not pull out the fibers. It simply moves them around and fluffs them up. Then the last thing you want to do is actually store your sweaters in a place that moths are not going to get to it. And that raised another question. Oh, before I get talking about the moths, I just wanted to show you, this is a sequin top. It's a vintage sequin top, which is probably about 60 years old. 
and I had it in storage for about 12 years. This is a pink top or a light pink top, but the collar under the arms, the back had started to yellow and I wanted to freshen this up so that it can be worn again. So I washed this with the baby shampoo as well. I used the exact same method that I used for cleaning the sweaters with the exception that I didn't roll this into the towel because of the beads. I simply laid it on the towel, let the towel absorb as much of the water as it could, then I hung it on a thick plastic hanger and I hung this over my shower right into my tub and I let it dry for 24 hours. The thing that I did to avoid uh, pressing or steaming because of the crystals is while it was hanging, I just came in and I just stretched the fabric gently just to remove all of that puckering from where the beads are and it's in tip top condition. So it turned out really great. It's not 100% perfect because it is 60 years old, but it's in excellent condition and it barely, barely needs a steam. So I think when I'm ready to use it, if I use it, when I use it, um, I'll probably just take a steam iron to the inside and uh, try and really smooth that out. But it turned out fantastic. So there you go. So in storing your sweaters, it got me thinking to moths and you want to use either cedar or lavender, which seems to repel the moths. But then I started getting curious, well, why do the moths come and eat your sweaters? So I came to find out there's two common moths that like to eat sweaters, and that is the webbing moths and the case bearing moths. And these moths are not what are eating your sweater. So if you see a moth fluttering in your closet, you've got something else to worry about because moths actually do not have mouths. It is the larvae that eat through the fabric. So what the moths do, they lay their eggs on protein rich materials. Larvae actually feeds on keratin and keratin is a protein. So these are all natural fibers. They are rich in protein. Protein, so protein is found on fibers such as your hair, your nails, your skin, feather, wool. So this is the perfect environment. Life cycle is between four to six months. So you can imagine one moth comes, lays the eggs, the eggs turn into larvae, they eat through your fabric, they turn into adult, they lay eggs and the cycle continues. And you can do some real damage to a sweater. Also love the darkness, which in a drawer, in a closet, it's a perfect environment for it to lay its eggs. So the other way you can protect your sweaters is by keeping them in a sealed Rubbermaid uh, plastic bin. But if you do that, make sure you line the bin with some sort of cotton, just in case there's any condensation, you don't want any mold um, in the case. So just an old towel, an old sheet, but it has to be a natural fiber, sort of cotton that can absorb but also breathe. Now if you have something really precious you can always use an old cotton pillowcase to actually put that um, special item in it and store it that way. But I'm just going to store mine in my drawers and I've got my little lavender moths that I made and I've got another video on that and it makes them smell nice. One the other tip that I read was if your preference is to use the cedar balls or little cedar shakes in your drawers or in your closet, it's recommended that you give them a quick sand um, every four months or so. Because if you give them a light sand, then you can reactivate that cedar smell that will repel the moths. And these beautiful knits, even the best of cashmere, sometimes you can find them at vintage stores or secondhand stores. Um, and of course, they're going to be better quality because if they stood the test of time, then you know that you've got a better uh, product on your hands. And this mohair sweater I bought from a vintage shop probably 30 years ago, and it's still one of my favorite sweaters. I wear it every year, and 
I wash it every year using the same method and it looks as good as the day that I bought it. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to look like a million bucks. If you try this method and you like it, I hope you share it. If you want to see more content, I hope you subscribe. Until then, happy washing! Thank you.